you have got for nine cell act one and act two, no? Yes. Polar act one and act two, no? Do we finish up act two? Yes. Where are the others? Oh, they are. Actually, where did we finish up last time?
is a very, very tough. Tough, tough, tough. It's very tough period for the person, for you teenagers, and for the mother also. Because you are neither children nor you are adults. You're in between the stage. You yourself don't know whether you should be treated. If you feel cold, then get the teeth, put it off. Achha. You don't know. You don't know whether you should be treated like, even you don't know, and even we don't know whether you should be treated like an adult or like a child. child. Sometimes you say, I want to be treated like an adult. Fine, fine, we treat like an adult. But then next time you behave like a child. Responsibility. With, with this adult, it comes responsibility which you don't have to take. Yes. The moment you have a problem, you come running to the parents. Mommy suffered my problem. But then you were told. So then the mother does not know whether to give you a hard slap. Yes. Or you say, no, no, no. I have to sit and talk to him. And that's what happens today. Today, parents are supposed to sit and talk to their children because of the influence. TV influence, neighbors influence, environment influence, so much of influence, your mobile influence, so much of influence, but that person, the child is not able to understand. He is half child, half adult. During our time, so many distractions were not there. And we were too scared to do anything wrong. In fact, even if that teacher shouted at us, we were so scared that one of the children in the school would go and complain to my mother. And even before my mother would ask me any questions, she would give one half slap. Yes. Hard work. That was enough to frighten us. And my mother was very funny. If I had come home late at night, where did you go? I'll mouth check. Yes. Why are you coming? Why are you coming late? Mommy, I'll mouth check. She would ask me a question. <laughs> and I'm hoping my mouth will mouth check. And my heart check. Yes. So, so this was it. She asked the question. Yes. And then she will only know set up. She know, and the moment I open my mouth, mouth shuts. <laughs> but that was it. And we learned from that. And we brought up our children onto the same way. We brought up our children into the same way. I brought up my three children the same way. The way my mother brought me up. We were very, very strict, extremely strict. But today, I see how my children are bringing up their children. Yes. That means my grandchildren. No, there's no beating and no screaming and no shouting. First of all, we were five children. So for mommy, one, yeah, five. If mommy gave one slap to the eldest person, all of us, all four of us, we stood. Yes. Now it's not like that. I've seen my my daughter, you know, she says across the road, same opposite my house. She's got two boys. They are in father, they are in both that. I don't know. I think Andrew and he said Andrew is one boy and they're on the end. Uh, they don't, there's no, uh, once or twice I can hear her, and oh, she's shot, I can hear her across the room. You know, and I know that boy is giving her trouble. But there is no beating. There's no abuse, they call it abuse. Beating a child is sexually abuse. Yes. Yeah. Which is, I don't know, but I have, I have beaten my children. I beat my children. Today it is a crime. Today it is a crime. Today it is a crime. So she says, and today, I think we will have just one or two children, not more than that. So that thing is under control. When you have many children, it becomes difficult to control. So then you, you, you left, right, center, <laughs> and go And go free. Because you've lost your cool. Yes. You're frustrated. Yeah. You don't have a thing. So today, it's just sit down there quietly, and then you sit and talk, especially when the husband is supporting the mother. In the what sense? Financially, there is no financial problem. But it is a financial problem. The husband is not there. So the mother has got to do working also, plus working also, plus looking at the test. That becomes a heavy burden. That becomes a very heavy burden. And then coming to this television, what happens is today, today parents, both parents are working. They are working, they go to work, they come back, they come to their frustrations, when they come home, they find the buyer is not the servant has not come, the maid has not come, the cooking is not done. And today, of course, now you've got fast food, you just bring up big bazaar, you bring up licious, you bring up whatever, whatever. Zomato. 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 And the food. Many, many years ago, in the year 1978, there were no malls. There were no instant foods. My God, if you have to make a phone call, you had to book a call, which had to go across. It was very difficult. Like you said, you could go off in Mashiko, 
was coming up and I came into Ashwin in the year 1978. Oh. If my little daughter, who is now a mother, if my little daughter became sick, I wanted to call up a doctor. I didn't, there was no telephone. My next door neighbor, there was no telephone, you know. So I had to ask my, my next door neighbor, please can I book a call? And if she booked the call at 10 o'clock in the morning, I will get the call at 3 o'clock in the evening. And that to banter, because it's difficult yeah. to banter. I will get the call from there. I would get to say, yes, madam, now you can make a call. It was an SUV call. Mm -hmm. it's we, have like that. Uh, we have to pay also for it. Yeah, of course, SUV call is there to pay for it. Today, yeah, today yeah. everybody has got a mobile, and that to WhatsApp is so cheap. You don't have to borrow a chili from my neighbor, I can make a call. If you borrow a I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to go to your house. I just said, sure, come. But at that time, even if you wanted to book a call, there was no phone. So it was tough, it was tough. Life was very tough. But okay. So then when you come home and you find children irritating you, what do you do? Sit in front of the TV. Please go sit and watch TV. Yes. And the children are sitting and watching TV. Mm -hmm. And when the children are watching TV, the mother is at peace. She's busy doing her work in the kitchen. Or she's doing her shopping. Watch TV. I'll give you something. I'll give you lays. I'll give you unpaid chips. I'll give you whatever, whatever. Eat whatever. I'm going to the market. I'm going here. I'm going there. But to go to the bank. I'll do all my work while the three children are sitting watching, watching, watching TV. And then what happens is when you can to get them off the TV, it's very difficult. Yes. Extremely yes. difficult. They continue to watch the TV because they're addicted to it. Today, I have seen, and I know I'm talking about my granddaughter. As a baby, as a baby, she wouldn't eat food until okay. you put her in that high chair and yes. give her that yeah. Peppa Pig, 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 she would make such a noise. Till we got, I didn't even know where to keep on pressing to get a Peppa Pig back. Oh, I would ask what she was doing. I don't know why. She would just, then I would say, wait, hold on, hold on. I would run to my daughter. I would pick up, please help me out. This is the pepper pig has gone away. <laughs> I would like to give her something else, like, but no, she wanted that from me. Pepper pig. So, and without that, she would not eat anything. So, that now also she's come back from school. She's in the first time. She's come back from school, and then she'd take off her clothes and all that, and then she'd unwind. Unwind, sort of relax. Yes. And she's, she's got her iPod. I got her iPad. And then she would sit and watch and watch. And then I'm up to me. You have any homework? She's looking. Kea, okay, you have any homework? She's still looking. Kea, okay, you have any homework? Mommy, don't disturb me. I'm watching, not watching. And so she is so focused on that. She's so focused. Then you put, when you put it up, she gets so annoyed. Yes. So it is a boon as well as it's a bane. Boon means a blessing. Bane means a curse. Why do you call it a boon? Because for the moment, the mother buys time, buys time. I can't handle these three children right now. I will come back from birth and I will really change my clothes. So, mommy, 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 please go watch TV. Please go yes. watch TV. Give me time. I want me time. I want my time. I want to give it up a break. So you watch TV, please watch TV. And then after that, after I've had a bath, after I've changed my clothes, after I've relaxed, then I can sit with them. In the meantime, so much of time has passed, and they're not sitting with their books, they become too lazy, they are just lying, and when they watch TV, they don't sit, they sit, they're lying on the floor. Yes, <laughs> Okay, they're relaxing. And as he says here, you in the dark, it's the only eyes. It's the only eyes, you can't see the rest of the body. You can see only those black eyes popping out at you. Which is a fact. Which is a fact. These things happen. So, what he says is, you are not letting the children grow mentally. They're watching TV, they're taking ideas from the TV, and they're quite happy. If you ask them for anything, they'll immediately go to Google and get the answers from there. They will say, okay, they watch a particular program on TV and that answer they will give you. So it is all imbibed from the TV, nothing original. But in yeah. our case, we were told to think, to think, to bring forth our own ideas. So we were growing from within. We were growing from within. 
Okay, and it took a long time because our parents had to sit and give us brown press and stuff like that. So it was a it was tremendous effort on our part. Today we open that open the open up your mother thing and see fat, 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 it becomes a bone. So it has got its plus point and minus point. I want in a disadvantage. Pardon me. It is more of a it's more of a disadvantage because it has stopped your mental growth. More of a disadvantage because it's stopped your melting. They call it the idiot box. Because you are just sitting, focusing, and thinking like the TV. Okay, you're not thinking outside the box. What he's trying to say is you want to grow, you think outside the box. You think outside your textbook. You think outside your textbook. Sometimes when I ask you, give me some questions, give me some answers, you'll open up the textbook and work two words, work two words, but you'll do right now. No, that is not correct. That is thinking in the textbook, from inside the textbook. You've got to think outside. Take an idea, but put in your own ideas. That's how you will grow. That's how you think. Outside the textbook, outside the box. Ideas you can take. If I want to do something, I got an idea from from the from, from the TV. I can take that idea, but let me put my own in because I'm in India. That was that idea was from America. I'm, I'm in India. Let me do it to I satisfy, to suit my environment. That's where you grow. Well, so it has got plus point and minus point. Here the sorry. Here the poet focuses on negative points because it's an idiot box. Keep that theory away from children. Now here, the most important thing we've learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your TV, television sets. Do not let your children be anywhere close to your television sets. Yes. Or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. Don't install it at all. But he is exaggerating a little too much. Because I feel there's nothing wrong with the television. There's something wrong with you. You have to control yourself. Yes. You have to control. It's like saying, he's, he keeps trying to keep. Until you see this, 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 this. So what do I do? I will take the bottle away. No. Taking the bottle away is not the same. You have to go into the mindset. Ah, mindset. The cover happens. Yeah, happens is you take the bottle and you hide it. We go out and you get drink. Why not? Ah, you've got another bottle. So therefore, the bottle should remain yeah. there. You should control yeah. your self. You should control yourself. Self control. Self control. Self control. Self control. Okay. The idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we watch them gaping at the screen. Children are staring and staring. They don't even say good morning or good evening or how are you. They don't even acknowledge your presence in the class, in the, in the house. They're just watching the TV. That is top priority. And if somebody has come to the house, say hello, take them inside, give them a seat, give them a glass of water. No, they're watching TV, more important. <laughs> they loll and slop and lounge about. Okay, one more. They, they watch them gaping, gaping and staring at the TV. They loll and slap and lounge about. I mean, they loll. They keep on rolling. Slapping me in a very sloppy, disgraceful, shabby manner. They're sitting down and they're watching TV. They're not even sitting decently. One leg here, one leg there, <laughs> hand here, hand there. Sloppy, lolling around. Lolling around. And lounge about. Lounge means relaxing. They are they're fast asleep and they're watching the TV. Okay? All of us do that. And stare until their eyes pop out, and they keep on staring till their eyes pop out. Pop out, eyes popping out means mm -hmm. you get a headache. Your eyes give a headache. So the headache is so much that you feel that your eyes are popping out, leaving the socket. So much you are watching TV, and it hurts your eyes so badly. Yes. Last week in someone's place, we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. <laughs> Means children were there, six of them, so 12 eyeballs looking. Only then they could see the eyeballs staring at them. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it. They keep on staring and staring till they are totally enchanted. They are hypnotized. Take them out. Hypnotized. Okay? By it. Until they are absolutely drunk. Mm -hmm. With all that shocking, ghastly junk, they're totally involved, totally filled up with that junk that they're seeing on the TV. Now, 
all of it is not yes. just children, yes. all of it is not just towards natural geography. Yes, yes, yes. That's very good. That's, that's, not junk. that's not junk. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Junk is said to be, junk is said to be something you see. Trust. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, we know. Oh, yes, we know it keeps them still. So, giving them the TV is, I've got one exam, one benefit. It keeps them still. It doesn't allow them to fight. Otherwise, they can't be fighting with each other. It keeps them still. They don't climb out of the window sill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook and lunch, to cook the lunch. So, they keep you free. Because they're watching the TV. So, you use the TV as a means of keeping them away from you, okay? And keeping them away from mischief, mm. and mischief, yeah. And wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved top? Does it, do you know, by keeping them continuously in front of the TV, what the television is doing to the little child, your tiny top? It rots the sense in the head. It kills imagination dead. Okay, that person does not, refuses to think, refuses to imagine anything, refuses to imagine anything. What's the matter? What is the matter? Okay, so it's all right. But it is funny and. You're not supposed to learn it. You're not supposed to learn it. It's interesting. It's a, yes. It is interesting, of course. Yes. Yes. I am so simple. Yes. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. He can no longer, uh, he can no longer understand a fantasy of fairyland. He can understand whether what he's watching is fantasy or a fairyland or reality. But his child is not able to understand that. His brain becomes a, as soft as cheese. Why? Because it's not thinking. He's just absorbing and absorbing like cheese. There's the holes in it. He's absorbing and all that knowledge from the TV is sinking in the holes of that cheese. It's absorbing. It's not thinking on its own. The moment the brain starts thinking, it becomes hard. That's what we're trying to say. He, his powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think. He only sees. All right, you will cry. All right, you will say. But if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. Okay, you're saying take away the TV. You're saying that this rocks the mind. You're saying it gets imagination. You're saying that it is it, it is a, it's detrimental to the growth of the children. Fine, we take the set away. What do we do with the children? Are we keep them occupied? That's what the parents are saying. Okay. Our darling children, please explain. We'll answer this by asking you what use the darling, what use the darling wants to do, how use they keep themselves contented before the monster was invented. So now we're asking you the same question. You are asking us what to do if we sell the TV. So then we're asking you the same question. What were they doing before you brought the cell? What were you, what were they doing before you brought the cell? Whatever you do. They were doing something. Yes. Get, get them to do it. Maybe they were calling. Maybe they were, like, maybe they were out playing. We used to play out. We should get out and play. Yes. Running around. It was exercise. Yes. Send them out. Or make them read. Or make them read. Or make them sit and chat. Or make them play indoor games. There was so much you can do. So much so many scrabble is there. Chess is there. So many indoor games. Yeah. Intelligent carom is there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Cards also. Mm -hmm. you. Uno. 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 Uno, yeah. Yes. Before this monster was invented. So what were they doing before this monster was invented? Have you forgotten? Don't you know? These people are talking in between. If you want to talk, carry on talking. I'll stop the lesson. I'll stop the lesson. How they used to keep themselves contented before this monster was invented? Have you ever forgotten? Don't you know? We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott they read. Gadzooks they read. One half of their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books galore. Galore means plenty of books were there. 
the nursery, right from ABCD to Mother Hubbard and whatever, whatever, all their nursery, the entire nursery was filled with books. Huh? Okay. The law. Books cluttered up the nursery floor. The books were all over, picture books. They used to show them, parents used to sit with the baby on the lap and say, this is so and so, this is so and so, this is so and so. Okay, yeah. The nursery floor. And in the bedroom by the bed, more books were waiting to be read. Bedtime stories. Yes, read the bedtime story. Mothers used to sit and put them to sleep, read the bedtime story, okay? Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales, tales stories of dragons and gypsies and queens and whales and treasure isles and distant shores where smugglers rode with muffled oars. Muffled oars means oars which are silent, not making a sound. Because they must be smugglers. They have to make muffled, yeah. Muffled oars meaning oars which are covered up. Without water gypsies. Some, eh? Water gypsies. What are what? Gypsies. Gypsies, gypsies are these, uh, are these, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, people, they people are they keep on roaming around, no? Gypsies, gypsies, gypsies. See, I tell you, gypsies are people who move from one gypsies. place to another. Yeah. No, they're not fixed in one area. Travelers. Huh? Travelers. They're not travelers, they're, they're nomads. Travelers. They're, they're nomads. Travelers. Okay, so I tell you, they, they wear skirts and very close skirts and lot of uh, heavy bang, heavy silver bangles and then they have uh, lot yes, of uh, earrings with a lot of yeah, coins, the earrings are for coins, four and a half, I mean one rupee coin, ten rupee for the earring and lot of jewellery for those are the gypsies. They are usually selling, they have got flocks yes. of sheep and when the flocks of sheep are not being sold or the produce is not being sold or the grass is utilized then they go and ship to another place. They're all the wandering type of people. Okay, the wanderers there. Yeah. Okay, there are any books. Where smugglers rode with muffled rows. Now, muffled rows are rows which are wrapped up so that they don't make a noise at night. Now, I'll tell you one thing. When we were in, when we went to Amsterdam, they had those funny type of shoes which are like wooden yeah, shoes. Yeah, okay. yes. yeah. yeah, wooden shoes. Now, I was wondering how they made the shoes the opposite way. Opposite way meaning? Yeah. Uh, now see, my shoe is like this now. Yeah. And the frog. And those are here at the back. Yeah, yeah. Now what happened is, when they designed the shoe, they made this in front and the frog at the back. Yeah. Why? I because see. they were smuggling. And then it appears it appears as if the person has no gone like, actually the person has gone back. Yes, I am. So if the police and all they came, they were looking at the footsteps. I mean, look at the way the shoe is marked. Yeah. The shoe. No, actually they have moved back because yeah. the shoe is ulta. <laughs> okay, that is to avoid or to to avoid or to mislead. 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 Misguide the law. Okay, they had this. This was the day suppose at the back. What was here? So, the person is moving this way, but his head is here, so the police would go ahead, thinking that the person went in that direction, no but the person is going in this direction, because the shoe has been designed ulta. That was just a feel ulta, the stretching uh, ulta. Everything was, ulta. everything was ulta, but it was made comfortable for the person to walk ahead. So, front portion, front portion, had had uh, this the plain uh, uh, what to say claw, okay, and this the back portion has a head, so the person is walking headward, okay, all right. But the impression of the head is coming this way, so the police thought that the person has gone into there, that's the person gone back because the shoe was made in that way just to avoid these smugglers. So here they have put muffled. Here they have put the rose, the rose have covered up, just to avoid the attraction of the police. Okay? Yeah. And pirates wearing purple pants. Pirates means the robbers, sea robbers. Pirates are sea robbers. Wearing purple pants because the pants will look dark at night. Purple color, dark at night. And pirates always have wore very funny colors. Yes. Very funny colors. Okay. And so one hand with that hook. One, one hand with hook. That was that was uh, that was the very famous pirate. Yes. He was his name was. 
He was uh, Captain Cook. He was Captain Cook. He had that, uh, he was a pilot. He had that uh, hook. Uh, he had that hook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And pirates wearing purple pants. And sailing ships and elephants. So they are talking about pirates. They are talking about sailing ships. All of these are topics on which these stories were written down. And little children sat down and they listened and they listened and they listened and they fell asleep. Not watching TV, but listening to the language, Anime. listening to the, and imagining. And there were pictures also, so the parents were explaining that parents had quality time with their children. Parents spent quality time with their children. Okay. And elephants and cannibals. Cannibals are those people, human beings eating human beings. Eating human beings. Okay. And cannibals crouching around the pot. Crouching on all sitting down. The big pot is there, the human flesh is thrown inside. There's a big man, like we don't have a big injury. There's a big pot, and the fire is there, and it's been cooked. And all these people are waiting when that meat will be cooked, and they will eat it. If you don't have any halal milk, be aware of something new will happen. What happens if you don't have? You have a newspaper, you have a newspaper. One day after, one day after. After, after, one day after. The news tells that it is like that. That doesn't matter. Knowing the news today or even a few hours later doesn't make any difference. How how are the people of Olin managing? If you are living in Washi and they told that in five minutes the tsunami. Radio is there. Radio is there to tell you. Radio is there. Radio is there. Radio is there. Follow? The radio is there. Radio is there, right? Okay, now. Okay, and cannibals crouching around the pot, stirring away at something hot. They're stirring away at the flesh that's being cooked inside the pot, at something hot. It smells so good. What can it be? Good gracious is Pen Penelope. Penelope, my God, good gracious, the name of a girl. My God, the cooking Penelope. Penelope is the name of a girl. If they're cooking, then I mean the flesh of a girl, my God. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter, Beatrix Potter, Harry Potter. Beatrix is there in the Harry Potter. Yeah, okay. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter. My younger one had Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig, okay. Younger one, okay. With Mr. Todd and Dirty Rotter, and Squirrel, Napkin, Tiggling Bland, and Mrs. Tiggy Wiggy Winkle at and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle and just how the camel got his hump and how the monkey lost his rump. Rump is backside. How the monkey lost his backside. Meaning how it became red. The backside of the monkey is very red. How it became red. And how the camel lost his, got its hump. <coughs> how does the camel get the hump? The hump of the camel stores a lot of water. What? And Mr. Toad and Bless My Soul. There's Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole. Oh, books, what books they used to know. Those children living long ago. So everybody associated themselves with books and books and books. Because you had words to see and you had pictures side by side. Maybe no song. Some was a mother's voice reading the story to them. Okay? All right. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray. Go throw your TV set away. And in this place, you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. So take out the TV and put a big bookshelf, bookshelf on the wall. There fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirty looks. The children will keep on looking at you with their ears. There is our TV, there is our TV. Okay, never mind. Keep the bookshelf. Okay. The screams and yells, the bites and kicks, and children hitting you with sticks. The children are going to get angry. Okay. They will come with your sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, if they have nothing else to do, they will now begin to feel the need of having something to read. In, initially, they find it very difficult to accept the fact that the TV has been taken away. But later on, they will get used to it. They will get used to it, okay? They will get used to it. They have to do something. Okay, fine. Take out a book and read it. All right? And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They grow so keen. They'll wonder what they've ever, they've ever seen in that ridiculous machine. So once they start reading a book, 
once we get the joy of reading the book, we wonder what is it that kept them away from the book and kept them attached to the TV. In that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen. Nauseating means a uh, screen that right, makes you vomit, nauseous, make you vomit, okay? Now, this is a little bit of an exaggeration because the TV doesn't make you feel like you're vomiting. Foul, unclean, repulsive. Repulsive means you are hating it, ugly thing. Television screen. And later, each and every kid will love you more for what you did. They will love you for giving them the art of feeling. They are just right thing. Is this clear? Understood the poem now? All of you can read the poem. If you have any difficulty, ask me. And then we will start the question answer. Rohan Khal is one of the most prolific of modern writers in India. He writes down very, very lively and simple language, but full of meaning. Okay, alive. Okay, prolific. All right. He was a British novelist, short story writer, poet, screenwriter, fighter pilot, and has a large fan following among young readers. The poem television takes a comic look at a serious problem among young children today. It's a serious problem, but he has made it a little bit of a joke, comic poem. Okay? The poem warns us about the dangers of excessive television watching. He tells us that TV robs the mind of the power of imagination and creativity. Dull in his characteristic exaggerated style warned that if we become zombies, zombies means sleeping. Zombies are those who are just staring yeah. and watching without using your brain. Okay, the staring and watching. Zombies. If we keep staring uninterrupted at the television for long hours, we become sleepy heads. If we watch the television uninterrupted without being disturbed. Okay. He advises us to read books, but this will enable us to discover deeper levels of joy find fulfillment in life and open a whole new and exciting world for us. This I agree, children, because I remember when I was not well and I had my operation, I had to sleep. I was told to take complete rest. So I sit down there, I mean, I was lying down and I was watching TV, watching TV, watching TV every minute of the day. In fact, when the light went up, I should get so angry. When there was no electricity, I should get so angry. Because my source of entertainment had stopped. But then at the end of the day, I began thinking, what the hell have I done the whole day? I used to sit and talk to my son and my daughter-in-law. What have I done? Just watch TV. And they said, Mommy, you can't do anything because you're not well. You've got to sit down and take rest. So that is the rest given you enjoy. <laughs> enjoy the rest that you're getting. Then I said, no, I think I wasted my time. I should do something better. Then I said, I'll join the library. But again, the library part of it, I had to go to the library to pick up a book. Yes. It was very difficult. I couldn't move out. I was too scared to move out of the house because I am taking blood thinners. You know what blood thinners are? Yes, are? you do. Yes. So, yeah. So then if something happens, suppose, God forbid, I have a fall and my has to be, hand has to be operated, they will stop the blood thinners because if you cut my hand, the blood will just flow because it's thin. It flows. So you have to stop. So I can't take, I can't take that. I can't take, no, I can't stop the blood thinners. If I stop the blood thinners, my blood will become thick and my heart will be having extra pressure. 
to pump. That is what happened to me that night. My heart was, it was paining me because my blood was very thick and the heart was finding it difficult to pump. There was a blockage. And was, so now that the blockage is removed and the thinners are there, next problem, I can't have a fall. I can't have a fall, so I couldn't go out. I just couldn't go out and I just can't keep on problem my doctor. Go and get me this book. Go and get me that book. Go and get me that book. So then I went up to Amazon and then the books were coming to the house. I had to pay for it, that's okay. 50 rupees, what, what are the delivery charges, whatever, whatever. I have read a lot of books, like To Kill a Mockingbird. You know, they used to read that book, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird. I uh, yeah. You've got the book with you? No, I haven't read it yet. Yeah, The Walker. The, and then the following one is Go Set the Watchman. Go set the watch, uh, watchman. I read that book also. These books are very thin. I read them very fast. Then I read the book, The Mayor of Casterbridge. That was another classic. It's a little bit tough. For you all children, it's tough. But when I read and I read, I felt I got more knowledge. And that helps me to add on that knowledge. And I'm explaining to you some lesson. Yes. Now I'm reading the book, Discovery of India. Discovery of India was written down by Jawaharlal Nehru. And he was in... Allahabad prison for nine nine years. Off and on, off and on, off and on, he was in prison. So he says his experiences and how he discovered India and what he did for India during his stay in prison. So it's lot it's a lot to learn, huh? In your time there was cinema. In our time there was cinema, yes. There was cinema. cinema was always there. And it was colored. I'm not saying it was black and white, it was colored. But, but we had to go. No, no, it's not costly at all. Pardon me? No, it was not costly at all. It was, look, the, see, since we were five children, then we, were, we didn't go for very expensive seats. We went for the middle class seats and we were all there. We were all there, the father, mother, all five children of us we used to watch this, this TV, uh, this uh, cinema. We were very close by. So, but we loved that packet of chips that were given to us and our mommy used to prepare some sandwiches or something. Or oh, popcorn was there. We didn't we didn't buy from out because buying from out was expensive. So mommy would do everything and she would give us our packets and we would go there. Yeah, and they allowed to take outside peace. Right. Then after that came these malls. Yeah. And Raghulila Mall was very, very expensive, 400, 500. But the seats were the luxurious seats. That was very fantastic. That was very enjoyable. But then what happened is, as we grew older, but we couldn't go every day. It was only on Tuesdays where they would give you one ticket, buy one and get one free. Many, many years ago. After that, after COVID, it stopped. During the COVID, it stopped. Before that, it was these tickets. Buy one and get one free. Also, the ticket rate was very, very less. It was just 99 rupees. Only 99 rupees. That also, 99 rupees, one ticket and one ticket was free. So if we went, all senior citizens were there. All senior people, we all got no work to do. We don't have to go for any job. Okay, because we're all retired. Yeah. And retired people don't have the money to spend. Okay, so they gave us that. That timing was meant only for senior citizens. And a lot of college children used to be there. So they had limited pocket money. So in the line, there were lots of pocket, uh, there were college students also. And then there's a big boat then that you would just keep on typing. And have you been there to these type of uh, malls? Yes. Now they have started again. They have started again. And we used to enjoy ourselves in those very big theaters. At that time, they were not allowing you to take any food from out. So I had a bag, which had a very secret compartment. It had a secret compartment. So I used to make my sandwiches and I had that uh, steel flask full of coffee. Okay, so that of course I would say this is water. They wouldn't open it up. But that bag I used to keep, you know, sandwiches inside and uh, you know, gram, you know, gram and that shinga there. That was I would love to eat that. So then I would hide and then I would keep one book on top of it. Actually, there was a lot inside because of that compartment. Now they're saying you can buy and eat outside food. Now they say, okay, fine. Uh, because somebody complained, you know, because the, the rate of tickets was very high and these people outside were charging quite a lot for the eats. So they said now they are allowed. And it was a big coat case and all that. And then it came that uh, in, in uh, 
who actually knew of the times that you're allowed to take uh, outside eaters are allowed. I mean, allowed. So there's no need to hide. No, there is a lot. When is it? With a name. Mumbai side. I didn't hear you, huh? Where is that cinema? Ramalila! No, no, no. It's not the last floor. No, ma'am. No, it's not the last floor. No, ma'am. No, it's not the last floor. 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 Very very recently. Not that, but I think I'm quite sure. I did it. Now come on, read it. Read it. What are you doing? Why are you spoiling furniture? What? Okay, tell me what it is. I'm going to go back to the school. 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 किसके लिए अब एक फॉर्म और भी लोगे